Hello there, Quicksilver Slash here, and today our video comes to us courtesy of Seven Green Heads driving the Tier 8 British cruiser, the Edinburgh. And first off, these spawns are crazy. A straight line there, like a weird like L shape there, and then these two right in a row. I don't think I've ever seen them quite like that. I'm used to more of a, a spread. And well, Seven Green Heads is going to have some torpedo soup to contend with in this one and that's definitely dangerous when you're in these uh british cruisers because most times you want to pop your smoke sit in it and just relax while you do damage and unfortunately well with five enemy destroyers on the other team that hydro is going to be very active and probably the second you pop it lit up like a christmas tree the flip side to this of course is these British destroyers rip apart, or British destroyers, British cruisers rip apart destroyers. Those short fuse AP shells just sink in and do a ton of damage. So if he can hunt some down, he's gonna be getting some good kills. Right off the bat though, comes up against the tier seven version of his own ship and the Fiji and you know, fires a couple volleys, but then sees a Mayhan and decides to change his focus as he works towards the smoke laid by the Fubuki. And when you're in any of these cruisers that really rely on concealment, smoke, that kind of play, finding your destroyer's smoke and working towards it is a great way to kind of extend your on-stay ability. If he had just sat further back, popped his own, well, he wouldn't have been able to sit here as long. That said, eats a massive shell from that Turpitz, I believe, losing about half his hit points. Of course, the plus side to this being these British ships recover a very healthy amount of their HP when they use that repair party. And this is when I would start to feel uneasy. You know, that Fiji is five kilometers away pop smoke, turn side on, there could be torpedoes coming. The turpids isn't seen, the smoke's running out, you can see, catches it, pops his own, and fortunately has something to shoot at for a second there in the form of the Miyoko, and this turpids. Also, for those of you who do drive British cruisers, by the time you watch this, the new patch should drop, and the British cruiser smoke should be functioning properly. From what I've heard, they've changed it so Rather than the kind of normal puffs that sometimes where you only get one, other times you get the two, now there's just going to be one when you start and hit the button and one at the very end. So we'll know by the time you watch this if that has been fixed. And this Miyoko, not in a healthy place. You can see that uh, Seven Green Heads is looking around, but nothing else to shoot at. So just wait for the Miyoko, two citadels, almost 10,000 damage, and well, doesn't get to finish him off. And there is a Turpitz getting mighty close for comfort inside that 6 kilometer torpedo range, and I personally would be thinking about my peds right now. The guns are still very effective, but with those single fire torpedoes, you know, you want to be in a position to be able to defend yourself, and with the good acceleration, I find in these British cruisers you always want to work forward. You know, as tempting as it can be to try to reverse around the corner, because you accelerate so fast, half the time you're going to be better off if you just blast ahead and use your speed to get out of trouble rather than, you know, try to slink away. And just look how much damage Seven Green Heads has already managed to put up in this short period of time. Four and a half minutes, already at 65,000 damage, even as a fire from his secondaries. So you gotta love that, and the damage just keeps coming. That turret's getting absolutely obliterated by the AP. And the Fiji, unfortunately, just slipped behind the island, had a shot at him for a split second, and the Amaki finishes the turret's off. So now it's kind of one of those times, regroup, you know, reevaluate the map and figure out where you want to position yourself. So myself, things I'm worried about right now, if I were playing, you don't have any caps. 
The scores are even because you've got one extra kill, but you need to get a cap and Charlie is the least contested. The Sharnhorst and Fiji, while dangerous, should be easy prey for uh, the Edinburgh. And then you can work your way kind of over to this area, pop your smoke, shoot at them, and potentially be able to support your teammates over in the Bravo cap. So that's where I'd be going and what I would be thinking about right now. But this isn't my play. This is seven green heads. So let's see what they decide to do. And pretty obvious, the Fiji is on the list of things they want to shoot, giving that beautiful side profile that everyone loves to see through their gun sights. Unfortunately, it overleads a bit. And I find it happens a lot in British cruisers. You tend to overlead them. And it, Seems like the second they get spotted, they're slowing down to pop their smoke. So I've actually taken it to habit of kind of going to where I think I might want to lead and then acting as if they're slowing down because it works out more often than that. Or just slow up for a few seconds, see what seems to be happening, and then fire. So once again, friendly destroyer lays smoke, so seven green heads is going to work towards it hits the safest place to be, won't be detected, and you can see currently three ships are aiming at him as he lands a citadel and his New Mexico finishes that Chapayev off. Gets rather lucky, turned into that Shorin Horse fire and only clips the turret, temporarily breaking it. I think anyone could happily live like that, or live with that, when you see that many battleship AP rounds coming at you. And, well, the Fiji's once again spotted side on. And unfortunately, I don't think those are going to hit because the Fiji was in a turn. Though, looks like one just clipped the stern there. And, uh oh, torpedoes. <laughs> and, of course, a bit of luck there. They run out. Now, just based on how many destroyers there are in the center, I would have my hydroacoustic search up right now. You know, it's up to you when you use it, but this is a vulnerable spot to be sitting. Those destroyers all kind of right on the edge of conventional torpedo range. So definitely something you've got to be worrying about. So a couple more minutes have passed and Seven Green Heads has managed to work up to almost 93,000 damage. Still no kills to their name, but hopefully that changes as they continue to work on this Sharnhorst. And, you know, for the Sharnhorst, kind of a crappy place to be. Got flushed out from kind of the safe area to the northeast of these rocks by all these ships pushing up the flank. Has a very large chunk of space to traverse before he can get into any kind of reasonable cover. And, you know, one way or another, that ship is sinking before he gets anywhere safe. And yes, Seven Green Heads picks up a kill, crosses the 100,000 damage threshold, and well, there's some planes coming in. And while these British cruisers don't have the AA consumable, they do have some very respectable AA if you spec them for that. And personally, I did. Because if you go with you know the range buffs and all that, you can have a ship that got, you know, some very deadly um, AA, even at tier 9, over 100 rating, and that's just not fun for a carrier to deal with, especially when you spend so much time kind of concealed. It can be hard for them to try to avoid you or root you out, because they don't know exact ranges to where you are. So the spidey senses must have been tingling there because he gets out of the smoke right as some torpedoes come his way. And, well, once again, I think just evaluating what do you do next. And here, I would charge into B. Two destroyers don't really scare me in something like the Edinburgh. You have hydroacoustic search, a couple repair parties left, and to me, I would just around this point and go steaming in. You know, there's situations where that might seem like a bad idea, and the Fuso's not in the best place, but as far as just securing the game and a win, getting rid of those destroyers is going to be crucial. 
and it looks like Seven Green Head sees things the same way because he turns in, pops the Hydro to keep himself safe from any torpedoes, and goes destroyer hunting. But makes a very wise choice, notices Fuso up there, so he slows up long enough that, you know, the Fuso doesn't have any pre-led shots on him, and then gets underway again. And it can always be tricky running down destroyers that are hiding in smoke. Because you know they're waiting for you. And right now, he's spotted, it was the Fuso, he's clear, and there's the destroyer. Kagro pops up at 5 kilometers, and, well, this shouldn't be too hard a fight. So long as he aims true, and first volley, 1500 damage keeps checking his shoulder for that Fuso, and I can understand why, but, you know, for all the checking, still takes the hit, gets a little lucky, and can, can just continue to work this Kagro who, you know, anything touches it, it's dead. So with the Kagro dead, you slow up, pop smoke, and just go to town, getting some free damage nomin on a battleship. Because at this point, that's all that Fuso is to uh, Seven Green Heads team, is free damage to farm. He's not in a position to take this game back or take control back. They're 200 points down because the team just didn't get enough kills despite holding, you know, two of the caps for a good chunk of the game. And, well, this AP does not discriminate, it does damage to everything it's shot at. The Fuso sinks, and that leaves just the carrier, and well, I do believe Seven Green Heads picks up a little extra damage here at the end. I'm gonna save us all the time because it is just the carrier, and pop to the post battle. I thought that was a very well played game by Seven Green Heads. 299,000 credits, 6,200 experience, got Confederate, 124,000 damage. You know, not too flashy, but still a lot of damage output. And I think the best way to label a game like this is tempered aggression. That is how you have to play these British cruisers. Too many like to sit back at the you know, very back of the map in their smoke, just lobbing shells. But if you can get in close properly where you have outs or you know you know your smoke is going to conceal you you're gonna get the damage out and despite only having the one kill still top of the team 2000 experience and that really just comes down to the damage he managed to put out throughout that battle and it started off very strong that enemy cruiser interprets and just kind of continued on throughout the battle and as a result most of his team still left, and when you can get a couple ships really quickly and just erase them from the map, they're going to be dead. And that's what Seven Green Heads did. He got into an aggressive position. He didn't sacrifice too many of his own hit points to get a lot of damage out. And ultimately, that's how I approach most games. I'm willing to give up you know, some of that pool of health I have if I know I can exchange it for more. And... That's a strategy I took from tanks. I always knew how much, you know, the maximum potential shell damage from the enemy was. And if I thought I could get, you know, more back in return, I would. And it works in ships too. The only difference is there's none of that rocking forward and backwards crap. Or at least there shouldn't be, you know. Like I was saying, the British cruisers accelerate so quickly. You can get yourself into trouble with that, but you can also get yourself out of trouble. If you're in your smoke, someone's getting close, don't try to like back out of it. Just hit that W key, sail right past them and dump torpedoes into their side and laugh the entire way to victory. Anyways, thank you Seven Green Heads for submitting this video. Anyone else who would like to, quicksilver slash at gmail.com. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash and I'll have another one for you guys later.